Hey guys, welcome to Spec Transfer and to Topic 3.1.6, ATP from the AQA A-Level Biology Specification. As always, let's start with a look at our specification. We need to know that adenosine triphosphate, ATP, is a nucleotide derivative, and we need to know its structure. We need to know about ATP hydrolysis and how it may be coupled to energy requiring reactions within cells, as well as how the inorganic phosphate ion that is released during ATP hydrolysis can be used to phosphorylate other compounds to make them more reactive. Finally, we need to know how ATP is resynthesized. So let's make a start. ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate, and make sure that you can spell this correctly in an exam. ATP consists of an adenine, which is bound to the 5' end of a ribose pentose sugar, which is attached to three phosphate groups. Lots of energy is stored in the phosphate bonds. These bonds have a low activation energy, meaning that little energy is needed to be put in to break these bonds, so they are easily broken. Lots of energy is released when these bonds are broken. ATP is considered as a nucleotide derivative, as it's a modified form of a nucleotide. Plant and animal cells release energy from glucose in respiration. However, a cell can't get its energy directly from glucose. Therefore, the energy released from glucose in respiration is used to combine adenosine diphosphate, ADP, and an inorganic phosphate ion, represented by PI, to form an adenosine triphosphate, ATP. Note that ATP can also be synthesized during photosynthesis. ATP synthesis is catalyzed by the enzyme ATP synthase. ATP diffuses to the part of the cell that requires energy, for example, a sodium-potassium pump. Here, ATP is hydrolyzed into ADP and PI. This reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme ATP hydrolase. ATP hydrolysis can be coupled to energy-requiring reactions in a cell. The energy released can be used directly to make the coupled reaction happen, rather than being lost as heat. Note that the inorganic phosphate ion can be added to another compound to make it more reactive, which is known as phosphorylation. ATP is then resynthesized by the condensation of ADP and PI, catalyzed by ATP synthase. Remember, this can happen during respiration or photosynthesis. Let's have a look at ATP as an energy source. The phosphate bonds in ATP are relatively unstable, meaning that ATP is not a good long-term source of energy. This does, however, mean that ATP is a good immediate source of energy. Each molecule of ATP releases a lot less energy than a molecule of glucose, so energy can be released in much smaller, more manageable quantities. ATP, however, cannot be stored. ATP supplies energy for active transport, muscle contraction, the initial reactions of respiration, the activation of other molecules by phosphorylation, and the synthesis of macromolecules such as polypeptides. Great, that would be ATP covered. I've given an overview of ATP as well as its structure. We have covered ATP hydrolysis and how it may be coupled to energy requiring reactions within cells, as well as how the inorganic phosphate ion that is released during ATP hydrolysis can be used to phosphorylate other compounds to make them more reactive. We have also covered how ATP may be resynthesized by the condensation of ADP and PI. That would be it for now guys, thanks for watching, please subscribe, comment, next time we will be covering water.